Hello, Mia. Finish your breakfast, Mia. Countdown. It's on. It's on. Countdown. Then no. No, it is time. Good morning, everybody. It's September 27 already. It's a Wednesday today. How's everybody? Mia gives a thumbs up. Joseph gives a thumbs up. Jamel gives a thumbs up. What is that? What is that? I don't understand that. Bad day. Bad day? No, we haven't started. Well, some of these kids are not uh, um, feeling too good. Some of uh, congested <laughs> chests already. Anyway, it's getting cold around here, so uh, just be ready for the cold. It's already snowing in some parts of the country, I understand. So, anyway, okay, today the gospel is from St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. And here goes, Jesus summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority. Well, power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God. And to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick, nor sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet in testimony against them. Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. So here is the story of the commissioning of the apostles. Right? Our Lord called the apostles in order to uh, proclaim the good news. Right? Proclaim the good news uh, and cure diseases everywhere. But in order to enable them to... Uh, to convince people about the good news, in order to facilitate their work, in order to give them some uh, level of credibility in what they were doing, our Lord empowered them, gave them power and authority over unclean spirits, to cure diseases, cure ailments of people. Okay? Because those kinds of physical cures and physical miracles were uh, one of the uh, strongest ways to prove that what they were doing, which is evangelizing and teaching people about the Word of God okay, and about Jesus Christ, was a supernatural kind of work. It is not a human endeavor. Okay? It is not a human endeavor. It is the work of God. It is a supernatural kind of work. But God wanted to use human instruments to carry out His work on earth. Right? He is using human instruments. In fact, in the continuing work of redemption, which we are all involved in now, and all of us are involved in as the church continues its life till the end of the world, God uses us, us, humans with all our talents and with all our defects in order to continue the work of redemption okay? to continue spreading the word of God in the middle of the world in our environments Jesus has also commissioned each one of us and and he has given us our own specific roles our own specific vocations in this world in order to carry out that one and the same mission of spreading the good news. And he has empowered us and given us certain abilities to be able to do that, certain talents, cer certain capabilities. Okay. He has given us empowerment. How? Through grace. Through grace. Okay. It, it begins with giving us uh, uh, grace through the sacrament of our baptism. Right? Through the sacrament of baptism, 
uh, we do not only become children of God, we become part of the church, and we are also uh, we, we also receive the commissioning to be other apostles, to be apostles for Jesus Christ in the middle of the world. And that, and that finds its nuance in different shades and different, different hues, depending on what kind of life we are living in the world. Some of us, God called to become priests. Some of us, God called to become married. Some of us, God called to uh, remain single. Some of us, God called to be missionaries in foreign lands. Some, God called to uh, have authority over peoples in government. See? We all have different commissions. We all have different vocations. But our mission is one and the same. It is to spread the word of God. To bring the kingdom of Jesus Christ here on earth. Okay? As in the same manner that the first apostles were commissioned to do the same. And in order to enable us to do that, God gives us grace. God accompanies that calling, supplies the wherewithal, okay? so to speak, for us to be able to do the work of God. Because otherwise, otherwise, this is a supernatural endeavor. We cannot, we just cannot do it uh, uh, by our own means and by our own strength and with, with our own capabilities. Why? Because it's a superhuman uh, task. It is a superhuman commission. It is a superhuman mission. It's the mission of God. Okay? The salvation of souls and the spreading of the good news on earth is not a human endeavor. It is an endeavor that Jesus Christ himself um, uh, undertook and for which he called us to be participants, to be his instruments, to further his work of creation, uh, of salvation on earth. See? So we are just instruments performing that commission in our different vocations on earth. That is what uh, our role is. <clears throat> That's what our role is. Now, now, and in order, as I said, in order to be able to fulfill that vocation, that commissioning, God gives us a special grace that pertains to that vocation. Okay? That pertains. So, for example, if you were a priest, okay, God called you to be a priest, to be a minister of the word and the sacraments among his faithful. Well, God gave you the specific grace that is uh, uh, um, uh, particular to your ministerial priesthood. If you are a married person, like Papa and Mommy, God also gave us the specific grace to carry out our marital vocation and our vocation as parents. If you are a student, like you, that is your vocation now, okay, God also gives you the grace to study well. Okay? And to be and to be instruments, to be instruments of uh, spreading uh, the good news among your friends, among your classmates, among the people that you whose lives you also touch. See? You remember the other day we were talking about being the light, right? The light of, of the world, right? So our vocation is like that. We are the light. See? We are the light, and Jesus is the one who supplies the the. Uh, uh, the the uh, energy for us to continue being light. Okay, so you can consider this gospel as being a continuation of that other gospel. Okay, and 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 um, what is that? What is that energy? That energy is called grace. That energy is called grace. Our vocation comes with grace, and that's a very important point that I, I'd like to emphasize for each and every one of us. Okay. We have to realize and, and acknowledge that uh, being an apostle in the middle of the world is a supernatural endeavor. It is not a human endeavor. And therefore, we cannot rely on ourselves. We cannot think that the good that we are doing in the world is a consequence of our being good. Okay? Of course, there is that element because we try to be good. We try to be faithful with Jesus Christ. So our own personal effort is, of course, part of that mix. But the greater percentage 
of uh, of uh, that the uh, ability to do good is really a consequence of the grace of God. Really, really a consequence of the grace of God. Look, when the apostles went out there curing the sick, okay, casting out demons, do you think they, they cannot do that? Right? Because it's a supernatural task. All that they can really do is, number one, obey. Number two, lend their hands and feet to Jesus and say, okay, here I am, I'm going out into the world. Yeah, but, you know, what am I going to say out there, right? Well, Jesus also said, right, don't worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit is going to put words into your mouth, right? So uh, 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 when the apostles went out to, to preach and to cure the diseases and to cast out devils, they were not doing that because they were superhuman, not because they were supermen, that all of a sudden with magical powers they can now cure the sick and they, can now, they didn't have a magic wand like uh, Harry Potter, right? Not like that, right? Uh, they, but they allowed themselves to be docile instruments. They were just instruments and allowed Jesus to use them as instruments so that Jesus may carry out the work uh, of, uh, of apostolate and redemption in the middle of the world. Okay? And we have to be the same. In our own vocations, we are just instruments. Okay? So you priests, for example, when you preach to people, when you uh, administer the sacraments, when you uh, preach your homilies, right? You are just being an instrument. It is God that is working in the souls of your parishioners. It is God who is giving the grace. The Holy Spirit is the one communicating to the souls of your uh, parishioners, right? And the same thing is true with with uh, with anything else, like like what we do here at home, right? I can be the talking head here. <laughs> I can be the talking head, but the Holy Spirit is communicating in your souls, and He is speaking to you, and He is giving you the grace. Not only to hear, but to listen. to listen, right? And to be—that's why you have to be uh, uh, attentive, right? And and to allow the Holy Spirit to act in your souls, right? Now, when you're a parent, the same thing. When you're a parent, see, you you cannot undertake your parenting thinking that uh, well, I have to consult all the books of psychology and all parenting books here and there and all the how tos of parenting because uh, that's the way I'm going to be a good parent. Well, yeah, that could help. But you know what? The bulk of it is the grace of God. The grace of God. To carry out your parenting vocation, you got to rely heavily on the grace of God, not on your own uh, expertise in child psychology or whatever have you. You know, it is the grace of God. Right? When you are uh, in a position of authority, uh, you know, whether you are uh, in charge of the uh, altar servers, such as you, Jacob, right? or whether you are uh, in charge of, uh, uh, um, you know, an office, the boss of an office, like mommy is, right? Or you are a government official, etc. Whatever it is that is, uh, is your undertaking in, in the world, even those things, even those things <clears throat> have to be heavily dependent on the intervention of the grace of God for you to carry out those positions of authority efficiently and effectively. If you only rely on yourself, uh, you're not going to go that far. Okay? And you, if, if we only rely on ourselves, we will be giving in to pride and vanity. That's going to be the consequence. We are going to be full of ourselves, puffed up with pride and vanity. And instead of being grateful for the graces that God is giving us to help us undertake our obligations in our daily life, we will just be proud. So let us, let us uh, always be conscious of that, especially if we are fulfilling a vocation where we are in charge of people, where we are, um, where we are in charge of uh, uh, influencing people. Let us understand that the grace of God has to do its work. We have to let the grace of God do its work in souls and that we are just instruments. Therefore, we have to be good instruments like the apostles were. They let God do the work, but they obeyed. They allowed themselves, they, they, they allowed themselves even to be deprived from, 
the, the basic necessities. Could you imagine Jesus told them, okay, go out there. I'm telling you to go out there, but bring nothing with you. Not a walking stick, nor a sack, nor food, nor money, uh, 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 or ne not even a second tunic. That is to emphasize to the apostles that they had to depend on God. That their work had to be dependent on God and the grace of God. And God will provide. That is the same mentality we should have. As parents, I can tell you very well, <laughs> that's my number one rule. I couldn't have done what I did or what I'm doing with my children and my family if I relied on myself. Parenting is a Herculean task. We have to rely on God for everything. And we have to submit ourselves to God's providence, to God's guidance, and to the grace that God is giving our own children. If we are priests, if we are administrators, if we are bosses, managers, or whatever have you, let us always learn to rely on God and the grace of God. So that should be our uh, uh, food for thought for today. Examine yourselves. All of us are in some one way or another in some kind of position of influence or authority over souls oh yes you are even if you think you're not you are you are all of us are instruments of god to do good to spread the kingdom of god on earth perhaps you should ask yourselves well how am i being an instrument for that how am i being an instrument of god it oops what was that in my place wherever i am in whatever i'm doing in the middle of my chores in the middle of my tasks in the middle of my assignments in the middle of my work how am i being an instrument of god and how am i allowing the grace of god to act on souls and not be dependent on me okay that's it for us folks we'll see you again tomorrow have a good day bye